Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today in this workshop uh, in which we'll be introducing uh, and showing you how to run spatial analysis uh, on the cloud with Carto. Uh, my name is Miguel Alvarez, and I'm a lead data scientist at Carto. And today I have with me Julia. Hi, Julia. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm a data scientist at Carto. Um, so if you have um, attended the um, uh, Javier de la Torre's keynote, you know that at Carto, uh, we now allow cloud native uh, spatial analysis. Um, we have created uh, a platform called Spatial Extension that allows uh, cloud connectivity, visualization, spatial analysis, and development capabilities in a unified uh, workspace. What does it mean? It means that um, we are fully cloud native, um, uh, and you can interact with data on top of leading uh, data um, warehouses platforms, uh, eliminating uh, um, heavy ETL processes. It's an end-to-end -end solution, which means that you can connect to data, access uh, your subscriptions, but also create maps and run uh, spatial analysis. Um, spatial analytics is hosted entirely on the cloud and is run easily with uh, SQL commands. And we've also um, developed uh, a complete toolkit uh, of frameworks for uh, development of a scalable spatial app uh, development. Um, in this workshop, uh, uh, we will focus on um, the use of uh, our um, analytics toolbox, which is a set of uh, function and procedures for performing uh, spatial analytics at scale on top of uh, uh, Google Cloud uh, BigQuery. Um, the analytics toolbox, uh, as you can see from the diagram here on the right, includes several models uh, for different uh, categories. Um, uh, we have some functions that we call core functions that are open to everyone uh, to, to use. Uh, you only need an account in Google BigQuery. And then we have a set of functions that we call advanced that are only available uh, to um, Carto users. Um, although in this workshop we will focus on uh, the analytics toolbox for Google BigQuery, um, we are developing uh, these functions also for other uh, leading uh, cloud data warehouses such as Snowflake, Amazon Redshift, Databricks, and PostgreSQL. Um, so the analytic toolbox um, in BigQuery uh, is um, stored in two different projects, one for the core uh, models and another one for the advanced model. Each model is then organized in several, um, each project is then organized in several models uh, that corresponds to different uh, uh, categories. Um, here, sorry, uh, here we're gonna start um, looking at some of these categories. Um, um, for example, we have a model that you can use to work uh, with the spatial indices. Um, if you don't know what spatial indices are, uh, these are um, um, way to partition the space at different resolution that can be used for uh, scalable spatial analysis. And this um, is because they basically allow expensive operations uh, like intersection to become uh, simple joints. In, the, um, uh, in this model, uh, we have developed functions to work with quad keys, UberH3, and also S2 cells. Um, we also have a model to work with data, both um, property, uh, proprietary data and uh, external data from our data observatory. For example, uh, you can uh, use this model to enrich uh, your data, your polygon data with uh, um, population data from our uh, data observatory as it's shown in this uh, plot. Um, then there is a, a model uh, to, uh, that we call the Tyler model that can be used to um, visualize a massive uh, data set um, through vector tiles without leaving the cloud. Um, there, there are some examples uh, publicly available in this project, uh, card to deal public uh, tile sets, where you can see, for example, the visualization of the world population from Warpop uh, or the new American Atlas or the nighttime lights uh, data set. Um, another interesting model is the model um, uh, working with um, routing problems. Um, here, you can find functions 
uh, that allow you to calculate root uh, scales. And actually one of the use cases that we're gonna explore today is uh, taking advantage of this uh, same model. For example, as you can see in this map here, you can compute distances on a network and find the shortest path. Um, there are also some, there is also a module to compute some uh, primary uh, statistics uh, um, useful for spatial data. For example, in the case of, of hotspots uh, analysis, uh, you can use the analytics toolbox to compute the Yetis or GI statistics uh, that can be used to identify uh, areas of uh, higher and lower uh, values of a particular feature compared to the mean. And this is, uh, would be also using one of the use case uh, today. Um, so uh, I think it's time for um, uh, having a look at the two use cases in practice. Um, so the first use case will be, um, um, will be explained by Miguel and is about uh, calculating roots uh, at scale. In particular, um, we want to understand how far uh, people living in Queens, New York, uh, travel by taxi and uh, which are the most uh, frequent routes. Um, in this demo, Miguel will show you how to visualize trip data using spatial indices, um, how to generate simplified networks and how to calculate routes and road frequencies. Uh, the second use case is about an application in real estate, and uh, um, we will use the analytics toolbox to identify areas of high low property taxes in Providence, uh, Rhode Island. Uh, we will start by enriching uh, um, the property sales data uh, with uh, external data from the data observatory, um, including demographic, socioeconomic, and points of interest uh, information. Uh, we will then perform a hotspot analysis and visualize the results. Um, so um, these uh, uh, two use cases uh, um, will be soon available as part of our documentation, so you will be able to navigate through them and uh, reproduce them as we are using all uh, open data. Um, we will have some uh, Q&A at the end of each uh, um, of, of, of the two use cases, uh, but feel free to write uh, questions in the chat meanwhile. So I'm going to pass um, the floor to Miguel. Yep. Okay, so thanks, Julia. Uh, yeah, I think I'm sharing already, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, the first use case, as Julia was mentioning, is about how uh, about calculating routes at scale um, on BigQuery. Uh, well, uh, uh, computing origin destination matrices and uh, the corresponding routes is, um, is an essential for solving key problems in, in sectors such as uh, logistics and transportation, e-commerce and Q-commerce, um, urban mobility and, and many others. Um, and as uh, the economy gets more dynamic and complex, so does the problems that need to be solved. Um, and, and the need for scalable solutions. And that's uh, the idea behind this on how can we calculate uh, routes uh, at a scale. In this use case, um, as Julia already mentioned, we are going to be calculating some routes in the city of New Again, York. Sorry, yeah. they, um, can, you, can you please zoom in the screen because uh, it looks oh, yeah, yeah. a bit small. Sure, sorry about that. Let me, uh, yeah. Yeah, I hope now it's uh, better. Uh, yeah, so sorry about that. Uh, well, as I was mentioning, uh, we are going to be calculating routes uh, at scale. Uh, for that, the first thing, so we need two main data sources here. The first one is the network. Um, we're going to be using uh, uh, open data. In this case, we're, we're using OpenStreetMap. Uh, data which is publicly available uh, through BigQuery. Uh, actually, this is uh, not sorry here. This is the table where you can find um, uh, the network uh, from OpenStreetMap, uh, and we are going to use that together with this function that I have here. Sorry, uh, which is the one uh, that we developed uh, as part of the analytics toolbox. This generate network basically uh, generates a network graph from the OpenStreetMap network. Um, and the characteristic that this function has is that it generates um, a compacted network or a simplified network where every node that is only connected to two other nodes uh, is going to be removed. 
so that in the end we get a simplified version that allows us to optimize the time uh, to calculate routes while um, preserving the, the distances between, um, between locations, okay? Uh, so the idea here is the first thing that we are going to do is generate this network that we need for uh, later calculating the, the, uh, the routes. Uh, and we are going to do this with this query that you can see here. The first thing is, of course, since we are going to be using OpenStreetMap, we need to, to select the area uh, of interest. In this case, we're interested in the city of New York. So in this part, we're just selecting the geometry that we want. Um, for the geometries, we're also using um, public data um, provided by BigQuery. In this case, this geo US boundaries uh, for the counties. So we selected the five counties in, in New York. And then uh, this is the query that we need to run in order to get the, the network. As you can see, uh, we're basically passing all geometries from um, OpenStreetMap together with a second argument, which in this case is the speed. Um, we're just setting uh, this to one so that we're interested in, in, in distances, but in case you were interested in time, uh, you should write here if you have information regarding the speed at which you can travel in, uh, at every um, segment, uh, you should uh, inform it uh, here. Again, any other transformation that you want to apply to the distances, you can apply here. Uh, right now, it's very important also, maybe safety in some, uh, for some use cases, or it can be uh, CO2 emissions, for example. So uh, uh, you can transform uh, this weight of your network so that uh, that's what you measure. And in the end, when you run this network, uh, you end up with this, uh, with this table that uh, I'm showing you here which is basically we have a source geometry, a destination geometry, um, and the weight, which again, in this case is, um, is the, the distance between uh, the two locations. Um, and I'm, this is from Cardo Builder. I'm, I'm, I'm going to build afterwards a map in more detail so you can see how to work with a, a Cardo Builder. But in this case, this is the network that we end up with. Uh, if you're familiar with the city of New York, you'll see that uh, well, geometries here are have been simplified. Uh, but the important thing is that we are preserving distances, so we can use this network for uh, for calculating routes. So that's the first uh, data source that we need. The second one, of course, is uh, we need trip data. In this case, again, we were looking for open data, so we are using uh, New York taxi trips uh, from 2015. Um, and the first thing that we wanted to do is, okay, so we have almost, um, I think it was almost a, a, a 100 million uh, trips uh, throughout the year. So we wanted to visualize them. Um, so what we did in order to visualize them was using H3 um, um, to, to aggregate data. Um, and uh, Carto provides this function here, which is uh, that basically transforms uh, longitude and latitude coordinates into um, an H3 cell, okay? With the specified resolution that we have here in this uh, query here, which is eight. So basically we are aggregating this data at, uh, with, at cells of uh, size around 0 0.74 uh, square kilometers, okay? So in the end, what we are doing is aggregating by origin and also by destination. Uh, and with this query, basically the results that we are getting is um, the H3 grid together with the number of counts. So the counts of, of trips that are started in that location. As you can see, we don't have any geometry here because Cardo understands uh, these uh, spatial indices. So either H3, quote keys or S2, uh, you don't need to, to generate the geometry column. Um, we can just uh, visualize uh, uh, data with, with, uh, with those indices. And this is what we have. Okay, so on the right, we have a map with, uh, with where the trips uh, started on the, uh, on the left, sorry, on the right, we have where they finished. Uh, and we can see that most of the trips um, concentrate in, in the Manhattan area, uh, even though uh, the origins and destinations concentrate differently. And once we know how these trips concentrate, now we're ready to calculate uh, distances. Um, since uh, for the purpose of this workshop, we want to have visualizations that are easy to understand. So basically what we decided was to select a location or rather uh, a cell in, in the Queens area uh, and um, the trips that uh, the trips uh, performed uh, during Thanksgiving 2015. 
2015. Okay, so we want to try to understand what people had taken a taxi in that area, where they went, and how far they, they traveled. Okay, um, for calculating this origin destination matrices or the, the, the routes, uh, we are going to be using this function that I'm uh, highlighting here, which is the find shortest path from network, uh, which basically given uh, two locations and a network, it calculates the shortest path route using the Dexta algorithm. Um, and the query, as, as you can see here, it's quite a straightforward. So basically we need the trips. So we need a table where we have the origins and destinations. We need the, the point geometries. I'm also uh, calculating the H3 uh, cell for, for those uh, because I want trips that start there but finish in a different, um, in a different cell, okay? Uh, then I have here the aggregated network that we previously generated. And here I'm just generating the, the shortest path. I'm calculating them. As you can see, we are passing the network, the pickup geometry, and the drop-off geometry. Um, and with this, we end up with a table like this one, where we have the geometry, which is the route from origin to destination. We have the weight, which in this case, since we are working with distances, is the shortest distance and an ID that we, that we gave. Um, for visualizing this, um, I'm, I'm going to show you how to work in, in Carto's workspace. Uh, so basically we have this table, which is routing NYC shortest path routes. So in order to do that, um, this is uh, what the Carto workspace look like. So basically we can come here to the data explorer. Um, yeah, sorry. Well. I already had it selected, so, but uh, pretty much um, what, what you should do is uh, look where your uh, table is selected. As you can see, well, we select it and you can see, you can have a visualization of your data and, and check if this is exactly the table that you're looking for. This is the one we want. So in this case, I'm just going to create a map with, uh, with the roots and see uh, how, uh, what they look like. Okay, so while it, it runs, yeah, so here we have uh, the routes. So here we have uh, the routes uh, that we just calculated. Um, probably this looks uh, better with a dark matter. So we can come here to base maps and select this dark matter uh, base map. And uh, then we can give a name to the layer. For example, these are the roots. So let's just call it roots and we can also style it. So maybe I want a lighter color like this one. And uh, for example, I can say that the stroke width it's 0.4. So it looks a, a little nicer. Okay, so write this. So done, we're done. Here we have the, the, um, the roots, but we don't know where trips started or ended. So we can add another layer. So uh, in order to add another layer, we have here the add source from, we can do as we did before, so we can look for the table, but in this case, we need to process the data so we can add a source by using some uh, query as I'm going to do here. So these are the pickup locations. So you have this query here, we can just add it. And uh, as you can see, uh, we're basically calculating the, the geometry, uh, the, taking the longitude and latitude. Um, and I'm also uh, considering the H3 uh, cell where uh, trips started and ended because again, I only want trips that start in this area and end out of this area, okay? So again, um, this is where trips started. I can come here to the uh, style and uh, give a different color. For example, this one, and maybe I don't like these points to be so big. So I just make them smaller, okay? So that's, that's it. Um, then if we are interested in also in uh, visualizing the destination, so again, I'm going to do this fast because it's pretty much the same uh, as we just did, but with uh, the destinations. Um, so we generate the geometries of destinations based on uh, the latitude and longitude, and we add it to our visualization. And here they are, okay? So in this case, well, let's just change the size of the, of the points. Um, and there we have it, 
Okay, and finally, uh, well, with this visualization, we can already see where trips started and when, where they ended. We might be also interested in adding, for, ex for example, um, the geometry. So let me uh, look for it. The geometry of the cell that we selected. This can be interesting also to have it here. So that in the end, we can have a visualization where we can see, again, we can name the, the, the layers uh, with the names we're interested in. And basically, I'm going to give this. And I can change the stroke width to 1, for example. So it's wider. And now we're done. As you can see, we end up with this visualization where we not only have the, the roots, but we also have where trips started and when they ended, OK? Uh, so given this, um, now, in, in many use cases, this might not be enough because you might be also interested not only in where people started and they ended their trips, but for example, for if you're uh, interested in investing in road uh, maintenance, for example. So you might be interested in knowing which are the, the, the road segments that were most used. Um, so in order to do that, uh, we're going to run this query that looks very, very large, but actually it's it's quite simple. Basically, what we do here um, is uh, take every 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 route and separate and split it by by route segments. Uh, this code here is what we just ran before, so it's basically calculating uh, the shortest path. So it's calculating the route again, and finally, what we do here is we aggregate by route segment and count how many times. Uh, someone has gone through through that segment, okay? So in the end, we end up with this, like line strings with the frequency, and we can vi uh, visualize it as, as we have here, okay? So uh, in this case, for example, I decided to style this map uh, in two different ways. On the left, you have that I have to style the map uh, uh, with, the, with the size, so we have it here. So I decided that to style with the line uh, width, um, depending on uh, this frequency on the map on the right, I decided to use colors instead of uh, instead of size. So um, it, it, depending on the output that you want to show, you might be interested in, in one or, or, or the other. And with this, uh, well, this is, uh, again, just an introduction to this. Uh, as Julia said, um, we'll be publishing this on the documentation. And if you look, uh, if you if you go to our uh, blog, Cartos uh, blog, you'll find a blog post where we describe how, how to use this, this functionality. So you can go more in detail on, on, on this. And with this, I'm, I'm going to give space to Julia for the second one. So let me, yeah. Thanks, Miguel. So I'm going to share my screen now. OK, can you see it well, or is it too small? Let me see. I think it's uh, good like this. OK, cool. Um, so um, the second use case is about an application um, using real estate data. Uh, we are using some public data on property sales uh, uh, in 2018 in uh, uh, Providence, uh, Rhode Island. And uh, uh, the idea is that we want to identify areas in the city of uh, high and low uh, property uh, taxes. Um, so um, the first thing that uh, we need to run this notebook, as you will see when we will share the notebook, um, is to set up your Google BigQuery credentials. And in particular, we need to define the project, the data set, um, and the table name uh, where the data uh, are stored. Um, the first step of this analysis will be to enrich this data using some external data from uh, Carto uh, Data Observatory. Uh, we will use um, a data set called Spatial Features, uh, which include data uh, about population, elevation, the urbanity level, and uh, some climatological data as well. Um, there is a public version of this data set uh, that is available uh, in a quad key grid at zoom 15, which more or less corresponds to uh, one kilometer per one kilometer grid. Um, so you first, to use this data set, you first have to subscribe to this data set using uh, the workspace. Um, and then we need to locate it in Google BigQuery. 
to do this, we can use um, some functions in the data model uh, from the analytics toolbox. Uh, in particular here, we are using a function called DataOps subscriptions, which require the name of your organization and your username. And um, what, uh, it, uh, what this uh, query returns is a data set um, with all uh, the details of the subscriptions that you, are, you have active. Um, in your account. Uh, in this case, um, I, I've only subscribed to this data set. So you can see that um, my data set has only one line. And here you can see all the uh, characteristics of the data that you have subscribed to. The name, uh, if it's public data, who is the provider. Um, and also uh, we can retrieve the table name. Um, as you can see here, and also the name uh, of the table uh, that stores the associated uh, geography. Uh, we can also get uh, the names of uh, all the and the description of all the variables uh, uh, that are stored in this table using uh, this other um, function from uh, the data model. Uh, as you can see here, we'll get a list of all the variables, their description, their type, and so on. Um, so. Um, Next, we're going to use uh, some functions in the enrichment uh, uh, um, data model um, that um, will allow us to associate to each uh, grid cell in the spatial uh, features data set uh, from Carto Data Observatory, the uh, property sales uh, data. Uh, in particular, we'll use a function from the data model called enrich grid. Um, so, uh, the first thing that uh, we do is to select um, which variable in the spatial features we want to retain. Uh, we're not going to use all these variables, but uh, here, uh, just uh, for the sake of uh, um, explaining, um, I've selected uh, several variables. Um, the next uh, step is to construct a query where you first uh, only uh, select um, uh, these variables from the uh, spatial features data set. And then you call the uh, data.enrichgrid uh, function. Uh, this function requires um, the um, type of the grid that we want to enrich. So in this case, uh, the spatial features data set is a quad key grid. So here we write quad key. Then you need uh, to specify the um, uh, a query. Um, for uh, the data that you want to enrich. In this case, enrich table corresponds of the, uh, to the uh, selection um, of features that we've made from the spatial features data set. The name of the uh, unique uh, geographical identifier. Then you need um, the query identifying the data that you want to en enrich your grid with. In this case, these are the property sales data, and we are selecting the geometry. Uh, these are point data that corresponds to uh, properties, uh, and also to variables, total assessment and total taxes, which corresponds respectively to the uh, um, sales value and the taxes. Um, then you have to specify uh, the name of the uh, geometry uh, column in this uh, data set, and also how you want to aggregate this data uh, onto the grid. In this case, we're saying that uh, both for the property value and for the property taxes, we want to compute an average. So at the end, uh, this query returns uh, a new table um, that um, uh, has uh, an extra column, uh, which is the um, property value and the property taxes uh, averaged over each uh, grid cell. Um, so um, next, uh, imagine that uh, we want to use some of the features uh, for, uh, from this spatial um, features uh, data set to, um, uh, to um, compute some uh, derived um, uh, quantity. For example, we want to use the population to compute the, um, the average uh, property taxes uh, normalized by the population. And this is what we do in this uh, query here. Um, the final uh, step of the of the um, of the analysis is to compute the hotspots, and this was the uh, the goal of, of this use case. Um, to compute the hotspots, we could use um, um, statistics called the uh, Getty's or GI star statistics, um, which um, 
represent um, uh, zeta scores computed uh, by comparing proportionally the local sum of uh, a feature and all uh, its neighbors to um, uh, the sum of all the features. Uh, in the um, analytics toolbox, uh, um, you can find this function in the statistics model. Uh, here, because we are using a quote key grid, uh, we use this function called get this or uh, quote key. Um, so um, the, um, the function um, uh, requires as input an array with uh, the values of the feature that you want to compute the statistics for, in this case, the uh, average uh, property taxes per population uh, and uh, the corresponding uh, geographical ID of each cell. And then you have to define how you want to compute the neighbors and in particular on which kernel you want to use. So in this case, we're saying that uh, we are using a Gaussian kernel uh, with a range of, uh, of three. Um, so uh, once we've done that, uh, we have added the, another column to our table. So we don't only have now the average uh, property values and the average uh, property taxes uh, per grid cell, but also uh, the um, Gettys uh, uh, or the um, GI star statistics, which um, uh, returns a zeta score. So we can use it to identify areas um, where the uh, property uh, taxes per population is uh, higher and um, uh, lower uh, than the mean. Um, so to visualize the results, uh, again, we can use the, um, the workspace. So we can go to our workspace here and um, start creating a new map. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Um, so you can add uh, a source as Miguel also showed in different ways, either uh, directly from a table or a tile set or by using a custom query. So we're gonna start uh, using a custom query um, to add the, um, sorry. I don't know what's happening here. Yeah, to add uh, the data uh, from uh, the property sales. So we're gonna select um, the geometry, um, which uh, remember these are point data, and then also the uh, taxes, uh, the property taxes, which is what we're interested in. The table, and then we have to specify the table uh, where we are, um, where we have stored the data. So the project is car to bq and then uh, the uh, data set name is demos um, SDSC21. And the name of the table is property sales 2018 geo. Okay, so if we run this, oops, I might have. Sorry, I'm gonna uh, copy it because I probably have uh, written it incorrect. So. Ah, yes, I was missing a providence. Okay, so we can see now, um, I'm gonna make it bigger here, uh, the uh, locations of all the properties sold in 2018 in, in uh, uh, Providence. Uh, we can then uh, style this uh, layer by um, uh, the value of the property uh, taxes, for example, which are given in uh, dollars. Uh, so we're gonna change the color based on uh, the property taxes. We can change the color scale um, and also reduce maybe the radius uh, of each point for clarity. So now if we look at the table, it looks like this. Um, we will add then another source. Um, in this case, we'll add uh, directly the data uh, from a table uh, where uh, we have stored the enriched um, 
uh, data set. So this is a code key grid. And in fact, you can see that uh, this is a, a grid data set. Uh, the first layer that we will add is the average property uh, taxes um, per population, which is what we will then be using uh, to uh, compute the hotspots. Again, um, we can uh, um, style it uh, based on the uh, selected feature. We're gonna select the same uh, uh, color scale as before, and we're gonna remove the uh, stroke color for clarity. Okay. So um, you can also uh, change the orders of the layers. Uh, in this case, for example, I've um, overlaid the um, point data to the grid uh, for clarity. Um, finally, we're gonna add another layer from the enriched table uh, with the uh, results from the hotspot analysis. So uh, we're gonna show the Gettys uh, ORD um, GI star statistics. In this case, the variable is called GI. Uh, we're gonna uh, select uh, a color scale that is uh, more appropriate and uh, we're gonna reverse it to associate warmer colors to um, higher values compared to the mean. Okay, so uh, we can then. Julia, can, can you yeah. um, close the SQL editor so the map sure. can be seen? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, we can then hide uh, these first two layers and only show uh, the, um, the final uh, uh, map, which is uh, the hotspot uh, that we have identified using the Getty Sword uh, statistics. Um, we can see that we have identified two clear hotspots in two different parts of the city where the um, property uh, taxes per population is respectively lower and uh, higher than the mean. Um, so um, if we need to summarize what we've done here uh, by using the analytics toolbox, uh, we have run um, a complete use case uh, uh, for uh, real estate analysis or within uh, the cloud, in this case, using Google BigQuery. We have used uh, the notebook to store all the query, um, but we could have run all these queries directly in the SQL platform um, uh, that as we have shown uh, before. Um, so, uh, I guess it's time now for some uh, Q and A. Um, I don't know if there is uh, something in the chat that uh, uh, we could reply to, or feel free to ask now. Thanks, Julia and Miguel. That was great. I think it could be helpful if you could describe some of maybe the other features that people can do um, in terms of visualization within Cardo Cloud Native. Is there opportunity to compare to analyses rather than looking at one thing at a time? Are there 3D capabilities and anything like that? Yeah, so in... Yeah, should I or Julia? Do you uh, want to... As you want. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, so as, as, as you mentioned, Elena, uh, well, actually, um, I, I strongly recommend to, to see the keynote of uh, Javier de la Torre and, and Margara on, on, on Monday, uh, where they show this. So, yeah, you can compare, for example, uh, in the map that I show you, where you can have two maps together. So, you can uh, as you want. Yeah. Uh, compare, for example, um, well, two, two different analyses. So, on, on the same map or in the same location you can compare two variables for example if you're interested in comparing what happens uh, regarding two variables and of course yeah 3d uh, capabilities are, are also available in case for example you have a variable for buildings um, and you want to, to to visualize them based on that variable yes Fabulous. Thank you. We have another question in the chat here. Is it possible to use is it possible to use points of interest on an address level instead of using a grid to perform shortest path analysis? Uh, points of interest. Um, the, the the only thing is that we need to know. I mean, in order to uh, compute the the network graph, we need to know which points are connected to one another. So if we 
uh, only have points of interest, which we don't know how they are connected to one another. Um, that that's that's the main issue that we have uh, that we find there. So we need to know how those points of interest are connected to one another. So how can you get from one to another? Gotcha. And then Ricardo wants to know in the chat: Can this analysis be applied in any part of the world? Uh, Both yeah, of them. Uh, yes. Depending on where you have data, and yeah, uh, but yes. There are no constraints on that. Anything yeah, with the example. location, pretty much, yeah? <laughs> yeah, for yeah. example, for, for, yeah, exactly, yeah. For the uh, routing, um, OpenStreetMap initially offers data worldwide, uh, so yes. Um, and then for, for the Julia's uh, use case, in this case, she used data from uh, US government, but if you want to apply to an, any other country that uh, provides that data, that's also good. Yeah, and the spatial features data set that I've used yep. is actually a global data set. Uh, so you have uh, a value everywhere in the world. Awesome. So yeah, maybe try checking out the uh, spatial features data set there, Ricardo, as well. I think we have time for at least one more question. Nicholas in the chat asks, how is a Gaussian kernel used with Geddes Ord? Usually this works with a neighborhood, question mark. Uh, yeah, so basically the Gaussian kernel is used to define the neighbor. Uh, the neighborhood. So for a given cell, you create a Gaussian kernel with a mm, defined range and all the cells falling uh, in, in, in that range are considered the neighbors of, of that particular cell. But there are also other kernels available. Uh, so I invite you to check the documentation. Awesome. Thank you again, Julia and Miguel. Um, this was an awesome presentation.